Hello everyone for wherever you are watching CGTN is bringing you live today from Shenyang Imperial Palace Museum Now we all know that uh, Qing's dynasty furniture occupies an important place in Chinese antiques uh, It emerged during the reign of Emperor uh, Kangxi uh, during the Qing, early Qing dynasty and it developed fastly during the uh, reign of Emperor Yongzheng and uh, this week, an exhibition of antique Chinese furniture during the Qing Dynasty is on display and over 100 finest pieces will be uh, on the show uh, right here in Shenyang Imperial Palace Museum. Now, joining me today here is uh, Vice Director Mr. Li Li. Uh, he is the, uh, uh, from uh, Shenyang Imperial Palace Museum. Uh, good to have you here. Uh, Li Wenrang, you are so Mr. Lee, tell us something about this exhibition. Well, this museum was built 400 years ago, and in Qianlong's era, it was uh, renovated, and since then, it has been existing for 200 years. A lot of the most, uh, most important exhibitions are held in the northern part of the exhibition of the ex uh, of the museum and uh, in the um, back part of the exhibition we also demonstrate some of the antiques used by the royal family here we uh, put on display of the furnitures of uh, Qing dynasty we have uh, four parts in this museum the daily life of the emperor uh, his cultural life, the life of the royal family, uh, and also... So now let's uh, take on this tour. Here we have uh, 800 exhibits. Okay, uh, the first... Tea tasting and the pure part. So most of the exhibits are from Middle Qing Dynasty and Late Qing Dynasty, and it's quite different from the Ming Dynasty. Uh, we know that in Ming Dynasty, the most uh, famous piece or raw material is the uh, Huanghua pear tree, and coming into uh, Qing Dynasty, the fabric or the wood has changed. Mm. So here you can take a look at this chair and see the beautiful mm. and mm. delicate patterns mm. on it. Mm. And this is the chair of the emperor. Uh, it shows the mm. very uh, delicate decoration of the mm. royal family. You can see that behind mm. this chair, we have some smaller ornaments, and those are just like guarding soldiers. Okay, so, uh, well, various styles, multi-function design with transformation, elaborate skill, and a stable structure is the characteristics of furniture from the early Qing dynasty. Um, usually they are, as for decorated style, uh, Qing style furniture focus on the magnificent and dignified design. Okay, we see artificial carving, golden edge, colored drawing, and etc. Uh, are obviously on display. Now, with here, so, tell us more about this chair. So this is just like a chair and bed. Uh, on this table, we also have some uh, teapots. As you know, the Qing dynasty, the royal family of the Qing dynasty, originated from the northeastern part of China, and they eat a lot of meat, so they uh, take a lot of tea to uh, get rid of the grace of the meat. So tea drinking has gradually evolved into a ceremony, and when people drink tea, they tend to uh, write poems and also read out uh, fantastic uh, literature pieces in Qianlong and Jiaqing emperors uh, reigns uh, you know that the royal family a lot of them they like uh, painting and you can see this is the painting that they hung on a wall in their tea room 
and this is reflecting the lifestyle of the Han Chinese. Also, you can see um, the table in the painting, and there are tea pots. So this shows that tea drinking. Yes, of course. That's what the question I would like to ask you is that they are not just furniture. Uh, each piece represents a way of living of the uh, ancient Chinese emperor. So the question I want to ask is, you know, each uh, piece of furniture has a period of history behind it. So what are the history worthy of um, researching into here in this museum? From the ancient China, we have seen a lot of very important pieces of furniture. And those furnitures or antiques, they can, on the one hand, demonstrate the handicraft skills of the ancient Chinese, and those are the best that the ancient Chinese could possibly offer. On the other hand, the royal family and also ordinary citizens uh, hundreds of years ago, they embed their culture in those furnitures or antiques. So when we are looking at those uh, antiques or furnitures, we are having a close contact with traditional culture because the ancient people, they embed their expectations and hopes. Well, let's continue. We have a lot to show to our audience today. So from here, you can see some uh, Western antiques, and this is the striking feature of the Qing dynasty. You can also take a look at the painting here on this wall. After taking the reign of China, the Manchuria, or the royal family of the Qing dynasty in particular, after Kangxi and Qianlong Emperor, and they brought in a lot of uh, antiques, and channelware and clocks from the West. They were a minority ethnic group. After taking control of whole China, they wanted to dramatically improve their own culture. So that is why they have collected a lot of antiques from different dynasties in China. And they also brought a lot of antiques from the West. So they have this craze of uh, artistic collection. And apart from that, apart from that, they also uh, make a lot of antiques in Hangzhou and Yangzhou, in a lot of the workshops across the country. So that is why, that is why in the royal family, in Qing Dynasty, they have maintained a huge collection. You can take a look at this cupboard, and it has many different boxes, and those are just for accommodating those antiques. Yes, another question I would like to ask is, uh, you know, forgive me if I'm, if I'm wrong, that uh, in my point of view, all these furniture, the color is a little bit dark. So it might look a little bit depressing in my, in my point of view. So what I feel very strongly is that those are in very dark colors, and it feels a little bit depressive. If we look at those antiques from the Western perspective, what can you tell us about it? Well, this is part of the features of those antiques. As I mentioned, that the Ming Dynasty, they uh, preferred the uh, Huanghua pear wood, but in Ming, in Qing Dynasty, the favor uh, or, or the preference has switched to uh, red sandal wood or rose wood. So those wood. They are in dark so color. Carefully material selecting and the making process can be seen in the Qing style, Qing dynasty furniture. So this is called the antique cover. And there are big ones, as we just saw. And there are also smaller ones, as we are seeing right now. And this is just for you to place some tiny little ornaments in it. So from the front side, from the back side, you can see that they are delicately made. 
Um, you may think that in the back part of this uh, cupboard there are no patterns inscribed on the surface. But take a look at this photo, and this is the back of this cupboard. You can see that even in the back, it's inscribed with those uh, very delicate yes, patterns. Yes. So that's one of the most obvious characters of Qing Dynasty furniture, uh, which is the elaborate decoration. Now, craftsmen in Qing Dynasty applied all the possible materials and the methods to produce the Qing Dynasty furniture. Now, the next room is the meeting with the ministers. So this is an official setting, and this is where the royal family meet with high-ranking government officials, mm. because they meet regularly to govern state affairs. Uh, in the eyes of the ordinary Chinese, and we may think that that is taking place in the in the uh, Grand um, Palace of uh, Heavenly uh, Peace, but this is not exactly the case, and they meet uh, those uh, high-ranking officials in their homes, in their living rooms, and this is where they meet, and this is their uh, interior uh, design. So this is the design of the chair for the emperor. And also behind this uh, throne or behind this chair, there is this uh, ornament mm -hmm. inscribed with uh, those uh, very delicate paintings and patterns. Mm -hmm. So this is the official um, place where the emperor meets with his uh, high-ranking officials. Mm -hmm. And this is a photo from the uh, Qinzheng uh, Palace. Right. So, for viewers who are not that familiar with Chinese antiques, especially furnitures, uh, well, the, the simplest way to uh, identify which chair is used by the emperor is if he has got a dragon and bought it on it, then definitely it belongs to the emperor. And uh, it's very interesting to see here. You see, uh, Director Li just tell us. Mm. So when the emperor is uh, living in his uh, living room and there are strict rules that he needs to follow in terms of uh, interior design. Uh, we have a chair here on both sides, we have a furnace, uh, we have furnaces. Uh, this is to simply add to the grandness of the emperor. It's the size of the chairs of the emperor and the officials are quite different. So they're different in terms of sizes, in terms of decorations, and it's almost instantaneously obvious so which chair, whose official, uh, whose chair this is. So we're going to take a look at those uh, larger sides of chairs. The size of the government officials from the Qing Dynasty, you see the difference. Between. So those are the chairs for officials, mm. and this is luxurious enough. Uh, take a look at those um, very uh, detailed uh, paintings and patterns, and also take a look at this uh, round giant jade that is uh, installed in the back of the chair, uh, because those, those are high-ranking Government officials they are serving the emperor on a so, daily basis. Yes. So Qing style furniture emerged and it was well received by the nobles and the rich merchant during that era. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have many different exhibition rooms here. Some of them are about the royal family, and some are about the life of ordinary citizens in Qing Dynasty. And take a look at our ceiling. And this is a miniature from the palace in Beijing. You can see how delicate it is. We're using some uh, colored paintings, and there are different lines going into different directions, and this is demonstrating the traditional Chinese culture, representing both the Han and Manchuria 
and the parent as many groups. The learning classes. Okay, so that's how the emperor. Mm. As you know, the Qing Dynasty originated from the northeastern part of China. Traditionally, they paid more attention to um, military skills like horse riding and fighting in a battleground. After taking control of China, they shifted their attention to reading to uh, literature skills. So that is why in the making of an emperor, they spend a lot of time reading books, practicing calligraphy, and reading those uh, classic uh, literature works in Jiaqing and Qianlong Emperor. Uh, you can take a look at this emperor. Uh, this is how he spent his time in a study. So, uh, well, in the early Qing Dynasty, furniture inherited the characteristics of the Ming Dynasty, so it was still called Ming Dynasty furniture. Mm -hmm. From the reign of Emperor Kangxi, since the political power was stabilized and the economy improved, people began to pay more attention to more material things living there and demanded decorative and luxurious furnishings. So in Qing Dynasty, the overall power of the country was not quite significant, and this is also reflected in their furniture. Exactly, and you can take a look at this chair, and this is not so luxurious, not so grand. You can see that the patterns on it are very simple, and towards the uh, middle period of uh, Qing Dynasty, the patterns on the chairs have become more sophisticated, and this is reflecting also the changing power of the country at the time. You can also take a look at those uh, other art pieces or antiques. Uh, this is a giant pot they place right in the center of the study. Mm. Traditionally, in a study room, they have to uh, keep warm, and this is how they uh, put those uh, wood fire in it. So this is simply to help the emperor keep warm by burning those uh, Chocos and uh, wood fire, and of course with uh, lavish finishing. Mm -hmm. You can also take a look at this uh, vase. Uh, this is just a ornament reflecting a vase. This is demonstrating the exquisite skills of channelware making. And take a look at the plants that is uh, inserted in this vase, and it's very delicate. And also pay attention to the patterns on this vase, and also this uh, wood stand that is supporting this vase. It's such a harmonious scene, and it demonstrates the very uh, superb handcraft making skills back in Qing Dynasty. Um, is this from the, uh, uh, the reign of Emperor uh, Qianlong? This is Qianlong. 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 So this is from the Qianlong's uh, era. Uh, here in this uh, museum, we have a lot of exhibits so, uh, from the early and the years of were basic Qing features of Qing furniture, which was usually heavy and a sizable, featuring exhibited carved patterns. Some pieces were carved from head to foot and had inlays of stone, pearl, and uh, porcelain metal. Qing Dynasty furniture had clay carved decorations and exaggerated shapes that demand attention. Okay. So this is uh, inscribed liquorware, and this is part of the antique skews uh, used in China, and this is uh, 
liquidware uh, inscribed on this uh, wooden board, and you can see there are patterns, and there are also calligraphy works on it. Now let's move on to the next exhibition room. So where the uh, emperor's play is? So this is a part of the exhibition that tells you how the emperor amuses himself by music. Uh, we have uh, different types of uh, music instruments. Uh, it's played here. A lot of the uh, string music. Just take a look at this one. This is the ancient Chinese uh, Gu Zheng. Uh, this is like the mother of guitar. Mm. And this is from the uh, Gaozong's era of Qing Dynasty. You can see how well preserved it is. So in this uh, music room, the emperor and members of his royal family would come here, have a gathering, and get entertained by music. Uh, also take a look at this uh, giant ornaments uh, behind this uh, region. And it's very big and it's also decorated with uh, very uh, detailed paintings. And also on this side of the wall you can take a look at the calligraphy written by uh, one of the emperors. Uh, and these are the uh, ancient poems and also some of the poems written by the emperor himself. Uh, expressing his taste of music and how he got amused uh, with his involvement in music. And towards the um, ending years of the Qing Dynasty, uh, this has become uh, part of the cultural life of the emperor. You can see how artistically or uh, culturally occupied the emperor is with uh, music, with calligraphy, with a uh, reading of uh, traditional Chinese uh, literature works. So how long have we prepared for this exhibition? So we spent uh, several months preparing for this exhibition because we need to go through a renovation, we need to uh, decorate different parts of the um, exhibit play. What about the, uh, uh, all the, uh, the finest pieces on display. Uh, so we don't have many uh, large um, or giant pieces that is displayed here because uh, this is, you can see uh, how small the room is. I wouldn't have uh, sufficient space. Okay, this is very interesting. But take a look at this chair. This is uh, very uh, luxurious, and you can see it is of a, a special design. Uh, this is also decorated with uh, 
dragon um, patterns, and this is uh, Laker wear inscribed on this uh, chair, and it's in the color of red, and it's very special in Qing Dynasty because it's very unique. You don't quite often see this kind of chair. And also take a look at the end of the uh, arms. Uh, there are two dragon heads, and it's, a, it's quite a unique design. And also take a look at the uh, inscriptions uh, in the back part of the chair. You can see a couple of dragons. The dragons, they're just flying uh, in between uh, through those uh, uh, cumulus or clouds. And also at the back part of the chair, it's also decorated very uh, delicately. And this is the back part of the chair. And there are some uh, Chinese characters. And from one chair, you can see many different uh, cultural elements. And this is quite unique. So this is the emperor of Qianlong, and uh, he's seated in one of those chairs that we just uh, showed you. And no other person was allowed to take a seat of such a chair back in the Qing Dynasty, and this is exclusively for the emperor. Also take a look at the dragon head ornaments uh, towards the edges of the uh, arms hold. Uh, this is also exclusively designed for the emperor. So as to guarantee that the color and the last lamination appearance uh, are unanimous and make sure it is a very firm structure. Even this just the convertible and the foldable chair for the emperor, uh, you know, when they go outside of the palace. But you see the lavish style are definitely here. Now let's uh, continue. Let's move on to the other exhibition rooms. These are the wooden plates hung up in the uh, palace. Uh, these are also very uh, artistic, you can see uh, this is a painting showing what life was like in ancient China. And take a look at this uh, instruction here. This is uh, carved lacquerware, hanging screens. And take a look at the pattern, and it's very unique in terms of design. Uh, take a look at this one. Uh, this one is also quite unique because it features those uh, gold pattern and gold mm, together with all those uh, veins, and they represent harvest of the country. At the frames or the bezels, you can take a look at the uh, cup, the lacquerware part, and it goes very well with the content of the painting and every piece and every uh, yes, uh, element some of, of this uh, that, uh, you know, antique is in very good harmony. Some exhibitions have shut down the, the, uh, uh, the tour, but they open their online exhibitions. We know that some of the exhibitions in Palace Museum have been suspended. A lot of the exhibitions have shifted online. Uh, what is your take on this change? Well, this is a trend that we are witnessing. Uh, against the backdrop of the COVID-19. There are lockdowns 
once in a while in different parts of the country. People are going online for those fantastic pieces demonstrated there. From online, they can see more of those uh, exhibits. So for this exhibition, uh, I can see that there are a lot of details, actually. Exhibitions of the Qing Dynasty furnitures are available here uh, in the city of Shenyang. Now, if you have any further questions regarding these finest pieces from ancient China, from the Qing Dynasty, please feel free to drop us an email and or just uh, for whatever you have, just drop us an email. And once again, CTN has brought you live from Shenyang Paradise Museum. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Welcome.